Okay, let's call this Parks Trails Recreation Meeting on the 21st of February, 2023 to order. Um, welcome everybody, committee members, council members. Do we have any public comment? The date might be in the other room. They're in there. But hey, goodbye. Come here. I'd love to have you, Dick. <laughs> um, have you all received the minutes from October's meeting that we need to approve? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, items for discussion. Um, have you all seen the new trails ordinance that was passed? What was the date that it was passed? 13th of December. Wow, it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. Because this is going to come into play. Do you have, does anybody have any questions about this? About the ordinance itself? Um, not about the ordinance, but we do need to spend the money because we're going to lose it next year. I know. Okay. What's the budget look like? The, the extra was, uh, that we had this year was chipping money. They didn't need it, but it, go, it will go somewhere else next year. So we got to, okay. we got to spend it. Um, because the ordinance has to do with what kind of signs we're going to put up. I did, uh, text some of you, Dennis, I didn't text you, the bollards and what their cost is and the benches. Oh, did you all see those? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, June 1st is the, right? June 1st. Or June 30th. When's the end of the year? I think it's June 31st is June the end 31st, of the year. June 31st. So we, it, they has to be spent. But I do think we can get different bollards. I think we'll just use steel round pipe and fill it full of concrete. And... Well, I have I have a grant that I'm putting oh, together okay. um, where it would be 50% matching, but of that 50% matching, I'm not sure the exact percentage, is in kind. Oh, perfect. So if we can, I don't want to say pad the grant, but yeah. we're going to have to spend the money. That would be great. Um, if we can grant this thing, let's do it. The benches, when I was up there the other day, um, I think could go on two, four, and six. Okay. One per, one per. Yeah. Those? Well, the switchbacks. Yeah, yeah. there would be three benches on three different. That's what I'm proposing. Two, what do you guys two, think? Four, and six? Yeah. That's where your biggest area is on a switchback. Uh -huh. They kind of have a lookout kind yeah. of a view. Yeah. 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 Um, and they would match the one that Woodland Hills Outdoors gave us because I've gone to the same the place. That you sent? Yeah. I can so, say, yeah, I just clicked on it. I could because I couldn't tell from the picture. Is that um, like coated in that rubber or is it just the. No, metal? it's coated. The metal's oh, coated. Okay. Um, as far as labor to put them in, I know we volunteered and did the labor on uh, Jeff's bench. But if I'm to put this in the grant and then we do the, you know, that can be part of our matching, but yet they're paying half of the labor if the city does it. Mm -hmm. But I have no idea what that would cost. Do you have any ideas, Ben? To put them in, dig the holes, cement. Well, oh, I, Get when I put there. in the cherry bench, I believe I build the cherry family, $300. Okay. And that was just my labor, right? So it's typically per man hour. Um, that's actually who paid for the new flag at the roundabout right oh, now. Oh, really? That oh, was nice. the, the, the cherries paid for that. So, um, 
Yeah, I would probably say how many benches? Three. Three. So that's a thousand, probably, for Three. install. Two, four, six. Oh. Yeah. Switchback two, four, six. So probably about a thousand, and then probably a hundred ball, hundred dollars per bollard install. I would okay. say. So that's two hundred. Um, What's the grant? Oh, it can be twenty-five thousand. Oh, okay. Zero to twenty-five thousand. Because I'm looking at the budget. And it looks like we have nothing. I thought we had ten. Not next year. Oh, no. For this year, it, June it got axed. It did. That ten grand's gone. Uh, I talked to Craig, and he said we still had it. Oh, per the, the revisions we just passed. Oh, the revisions. That ten thousand came out. So it did go for Sam. <laughs> it did. It went to something, but per the revisions. There's nothing in the budget. Yeah, because sir, and you can correct me here. I'm hoping you can correct me, Janet. But per the budget, the budget revision February 2023. I just opened it. We're at uh, a zero allocation in that chipper column. And then everything else, the only places that have any funds for parks and trails really is salaries and wages, which doesn't help us at all, really. So we went way over on um, legal fees this year. <laughs> and then um, we've had records, not record, but for a lot of years, record snowfall, and we've gone through a lot of salt. We, Our last meeting in the Finance Committee, we were discussing that our it's time for new snowfalls. One of them's down. We're going to have, like, the storm of the season tonight, and one of our plows is in the shop, so we're going to be short a plow. So that will be fun. Um, There's a question. Um, yes. Somebody paid some money for trails. I love. do not believe we have seen that yet. Yeah, we haven't received oh, any. And and it would be for the future trail, not just the trail committee. I was just wanting to make sure that that would yeah. be flagged for trails and not absorbed somewhere else. Correct. We yeah. have like $1,200 in there. Yeah. Uh, parks, capital outlay, and discretionary. So we still have 1,200. Um, well, yes, even with the revision. But the 10,000 did go away. And part of that is because we didn't spend it and we didn't have a plan to spend. You know, we, we've gone half of the year and haven't earmarked that for anything. So it was taken. For 10 grand? No, it just came down to priorities within the whole city holistically. So, um, like, we had some some things that we're paying on, and we usually pay, like, 25000 extra a year on. And we, like, we cut that. Like, we've cut, they've cut everywhere. So everything's been cut that like possibly can be. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're completely out of luck. But if we've got a... So is there a financial match as well as an in-kind, or in-kind will be the match? In-kind can be part of the match. Part of the match. So what we would just need to do is, is when, when you want to, with a new grant proposal that we've just passed, um, if you want to present that to the council with that financial element, then we can see, and then we can, we can look and see what we need to do. There's a few things we've got potentially that we can work with. So. Well, so should I? So should we have Craig make the bollards and I'll spend six hundred dollars? I think if we can do them cheap, I don't think it's a problem. Okay. They would also be like this big, right? So they would be able to take. They'd be a little more substantial than the ones I, that I think they look like they were about that big, right? Uh, I forget what the diameter was. Probably a three by three or a four by four. But either way, four we can make them work. Yeah, four and a half. Four and a half, okay. So maybe about that, you know, 
versus something that nobody could hook onto and so pull if we, out. If we did that kind and we made them, then what would we would we do the chain thing or something to chain it? Uh, yes. So we could put eye bolts on both sides and make it happen. We have to, because now it's mandated by the ordinance. Okay. So it has to be done. Okay, when you say the chain is mandated by the ordinance, what do you mean? Well, the bollards are mandated by the ordinance, right? right? But we can put the ability to put a chain on there, well, if that is. There's already one there, but then it's who's going to do it? Um, I thought about a gate, and I started investigating that. Yeah, it can't swing this way, um, and that's another thing with the signs that we have now and the avalanche that came down. You can't even see the sign that says avalanche danger. It's buried. <laughs> they, they didn't put it up high enough. Oh. It's buried on the trail sign. They need to be that's on like proof. a. Uh, the ones we got were is it eight feet tall. It's like a long silver, like the city is. Yeah, that's what we need up there. Okay. I mean, we could put more than one sign on them. They're about a hundred dollars a piece uh, for the size that Jeff and I bought. But again, what are we going to say on the signs? And then talking about the gate, because there's no power by toolers. You know, where you come flat after you come down the hill and you go flat and you start to go up again towards the cape. Uh, there's no power there. So we'd have to do solar or battery. And because of where that part of the trail sits, batteries are, because of the cold, probably wouldn't end up working, even if it was only twice a day, 10, 30. And solar's unpredictable as well. And solar's unpredictable. In this weather. So I saw Corbett the other day, and I talked to him, and he still would like a gate put up on Did the- you just chain both? No, on the water tank. So on the left of the fork, mm -hmm. so where the where it forks to go right to the to the trail and left to the, the water tank, uh, or over by Machado's. right by no no right, right this is road. on the easement so that means tailors have to get involved. I okay. talked to Dave the other day and he was really busy. So the conversation, <laughs> the conversation didn't ensue. It's not the answer I was expecting. <laughs> he was busy. Oh, yeah. He was really busy. He said his brain was tired. Um, so, but where that would be, you know how the private road goes around and loops around towards my house, and then the water tank road goes up here, and Taylor's driveway is to the left of that. It would be just, Corbett said, just where the private road meets the easement for the water tank. But then again, is it open it? We just open and close it, and we have power. No. We have electricity there. So I still have to touch base with Dave Taylor. But isn't it just going to be closed certain times? So, Barbara just wants to make sure that he has access. The sheriff would need access. Um, but we would have power. So we wouldn't have to worry about batteries. Or, but the gates aren't cheap. Um, and he wants a gate instead of a chain. Well, we can put a chain up, but who's going to put it up and take it down? Every morning and every night, that's the question. Okay. Yeah. But it's not just staying open sometimes. Well, it, it is between the hours of 7.30 and 9.30. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, every night. Yeah. I think per the ordinance, the bollards are there to enforce the, the, width. Risk, the width of vehicles that can go up okay. there. Um, one of those bollards will be sleeved with a padlock on it so that it so, can be pulled okay. for under it in the ordinance of states per the mayor's uh, authority that bollard can be pulled um, so do we need any more than that if if vehicles can't get up well they under 50 inches or under can yeah, yeah. the idea of the 
to match it with the disturbing the peace ordinance, then how are you going to enforce the ordinance? So yeah. I'm thinking about something like this. But I I don't think it's doable over there by Taylor's. I mean I don't see see the sun sun now till maybe eleven in yeah. the morning. And then you take into account when the leaves come on the trees. Is that really gonna be able to be solar powered? I don't think so. No, we have solar at our house and we have an app on our phone we can see and with the snow and the cold, like it's just not doing much. I think for like that time the date coming down, it, it seems like it's too close to me to get there and I'm worried it would be dangerous. That's a that's a possibility. I think the one would let be less likely to be damaged if it were on the easement to the water tank. And that also helps the city enforce its easement. That is true. So if it's not right, it's the law that we have. I wonder if it's just going to, I mean, what Michelle's saying, it's just going to kind of keep people all on your little road around. Well, I don't think, I mean, hikers do now cut through tours, but it's more the motorized vehicles getting up and back in there. And, and they can't really cut around because there's a lot of logs no, and, and rocks and stuff. There really is. Well, there there is a way. But since Tulers did their um, hazard study, I think it'd be pretty hard for a motorized vehicle to go through there because it's so chewed up. Hey, guys, I have a question to, to get a little bit of clarity of exactly what we're talking about. Um, before the bullards, from my understanding, were at the bottom of the trail, uh, right as you start the incline. Um, are we discussing putting bullards somewhere else? I, from my understanding, before the gate was something for the parking area that we were working on, and then the bullards are going to be the actual trail access itself at the bottom of the trail. Is that different? When you say bottom of the trail, Brad, what do you mean? So where the existing chain is now where we've had that there, that was my understanding where we were planning to put the bullards. Is that That's correct? correct? That's correct. And then, so, so I agree with you that the gate seems pretty impractical for something there. My suggestion would be instead of two bullards, you do two on the exterior and then one in the center that can be removed. That's going to help you with at least maintaining the trail width standard. Um, it's, you know, right there at that trail, uh, entrance, it's going to be very difficult for vehicles to get around it if they're trying to, cause that's unfortunately what people decide to do when you do put up restrictions. Um, but I, I think that's going to be our best solution for that in terms of who's going to maintain it and everything there. That's, that's where I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And my, my suggestion would be actually using the bullards to enforce open enclosures every single day, I think is a little impractical. I think that's going to be more for when the trails open or close seasonality and keeping it to with restrictions is what I think is a more practical solution. That's actually really smart. Because you take it out when it's open, but like in the winter, if you don't want motorized vehicles up in there, you put that third one in and they can't. Well, nobody, to my knowledge, goes up there. They, so when it's snowing, nobody's going up? In the winter? No. In the winter, no. In the oh, even yeah, in the lots of winter, I think it's important to consider mud and all that kind of stuff. There's been times where we had the trail close clear into June, July, just because of conditions. I think that's a, a thing to consider for how it's going to keep that trail protected and closed when we want it closed. I, I think it's smart. I, okay, so... Yeah. Run it, by, run it by us again, Brad, how many bollards you're talking about? Well, it's so, like a triangle. You have two here that are stay all the time for width, right? And then you have one right there in the middle. Correct. So you just basically remove no, it's the removable. third bullard when it's the seasonality, when we're when it's open. We could put it there, say we get like extreme rain and it's real mud conditions, and we decide that we want to close it for whatever reason, fire danger, whatever in the heck it is. Um, that would allow us to just kind of put it there, which would restrict access to it. Sure, smaller vehicles could try to sneak by it if they really try, but
but it would also leave uh, access to pedestrians. So if we're just trying to keep motorized vehicles off of it at that time. Motorcycle can get there right now. Yeah, yeah they'll do what they want. The motorcycle, there's no way. But, yeah, yeah without a fence. And but have you honest, seen that on other trails, Brad? Is that where you got that idea from? Yes, I've seen that in, in some other trails, yes. So, and the, the big thing that's truly causing damage on that is the bigger vehicles, right? It's the, the larger multi-wheel things than the two wheels. If a few people decide to sneak by on some dirt bikes or whatever they're trying to do, it's not going to cause as many issues. And honestly, I still am a true believer that when you have those signs up, most people are going to abide by the rules and turn around. So you may have a couple outliers, but I'm, I'm all for making the, you know, design for the majority. there how do we enforce the 10 30 to 7 i think we just in currently i think we're enforcing that we're going to have to just with signs we're just I think there's any way physically to enforce that mm -mm. yeah and if we had the cash then i think a, an automated a boom system could potentially work the only other issue with booms so there's really only one gate system that's snowproof. And that's a rolling gate on a track that extends over a hill. So then this, the back track can't ever get snowed over, right? And then it just can slide through and over. But those are, now you're talking $15,000 oh, yeah. well, gate. What, about, uh, what, I, what I envisioned? To put it in perspective, was something like when you go through the car wash. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, the yeah, issue there is your so counterweight, yep. right? The counterweight has to then sink down. And if that packs with snow, you're just going to burn through your motors because it'll, and then it'll keep trying to open or it'll shut and then it'll try again and it'll just, it'll grind them out pretty fast. Okay. Well, we can try with signs. I say we try, let's, we start cheap and then. Try with signs and call the sheriff, probably. That's going to that be point. your only options. Because right now, I think our signage, as we've talked about a lot in this council, is lacking, right? Mm -hmm. If we can get some clear, defined signs, and it sounds like, and I love your idea there, Sherry, is, is we need to get them up in the air. Yeah. We need to make them more snowproof. And what about cameras? In terms of people see, oh, they're going to follow up. We have them up by the water tanks. They did go up, the cameras? Uh, well, parts are ordered. but Yeah, it's close. But I did tell Corbett the other day, I said, because we have the signs for the water tank saying you're on camera. Right. I told him. Put them up. Let's put them up. People don't maybe know. Maybe we do that on the trail. And if you say trail is monitored by camera or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, or even just smile, you're on camera, you know. You know, you can get you know, you can get a ring camera that's solar powered. That's what I have on my cabin. Um, for my front door, my front porch, as I have a ring camera and it has a little solar panel. Now, does it go out when it gets 45 below? Yeah, it goes out. But most of the time, <laughs> most of well, the time it works. You can also buy dummy ring cams. Yeah. Thing doesn't actually have to work. Sometimes really the best defense is those ADT signs out front of the house. Yeah, we Whether there's a ones. system inside, actually, or not, people aren't willing to take that risk. Or it's the dummies that, that at least the light would come on or there's something. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, this grant is due the 17th of March. Well, okay. How are you coming on that? I was going to help you, and then I went well, down. Well, that's what I was pulling all the <laughs> numbers together yeah. for. Um, I crushed my wrist, and I dislocated my hand. And so I had to have Did surgery. Uh -huh. I was roller skating. Janet's an overachiever. Roller skating. Oh, I thought it was ice skating. I was no, you were doing it was roller skating. skating. So, you well, yeah, I, I, I was an ice skater when I was a little girl. So I was trying to prove that I was still 29. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. so um, they, I had, I got taken to Utah Valley and they had to put me under and set my hand because it was not where it was supposed to be. Well, I've talked a lot with <laughs> my wrist but you don't know what they need. so then on wednesday they opened me up and did surgery and put a metal plate right here and a bunch oh. of screws and those are permanent janet now that you're 32 
I know, right? You cannot roller skate anymore. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> well, I don't see the trail being opened. I mean, being totally clear. For a long time. Until maybe June. And there is a slide up there that's moving. Carrie was just talking about it. There's search and rescue people that go up every few days and keep an eye on it. For the, where the slide is? It's, it's been moving a little bit slowly. Oh, really? And they're worried that this big storm that it some may come down. I was just there this morning. At least you can't see. The untrained eye can't see it. I don't know. They're measuring it or something. Because oh, okay. she's emergency management for the city. So, oh. so they're monitoring it. But, but it's the same place. It's the same one. It's the same slide. It's just moved a little bit, but they are afraid that this big storm will. So be careful if you're going up there. The snow this year has been weird because one storm will be super wet and heavy. Then the next storm will be like pebbly. And then the next storm will just be fluff. And then it'll be super heavy. And so it's like, it's like roller skates. It just, it creates these layers that are... It just it creates these layers that just. Well, it's, where the avalanche came down now, there's a, a ball of ice up there that's probably the size of these four tables put together. I mean, it's huge. And there's oh. this teeny little track that goes around it up towards the geofence, which is not that far, to get in between the quake. So it's going to be a while before all that melts. Good times. Yeah. Thank goodness. No, we need so it. <laughs> I know. I, I'm like, I love, we love Lake Powell. So I just keep thinking, okay, yes. it's all going to end up in Lake yes. Powell. That's what I tell myself every day. <laughs> as long as this I'm going to enjoy it this it summer. There. Okay. So what signs, what do we want to say on the signs? Other than we've got the 50 inches that we need to delineate time what else i think do we want to put on basic ordinance rules for the trail well yeah if you reference that ordinance number on the sign you don't want to get too much on the sign but i think you just want to have the basic like uh, you know the hours the width cleaning up after your dog yeah you know, whatever have we made a list of those things yet yeah john has all that information John Wallace. But the like clean up after your dog, the no littering, you know, whatever you bring no in, fires. Bring out. Yeah, no fires. fires. Oh, right, you can't no see, fires. you can't see that that one. That one should yeah, be bold, very, right? Yeah. No campfires is very too. You already have those signs. You could just put them on the tall metal. We do well, probably when there's snow, we don't worry about a fire. If somebody wants to snowshoe up there to have a fire, I guess. <laughs> More if they're power going to, to do them. It, we'd like them to do it now and not in July. Yeah. <laughs> or September. <laughs> I like that idea. That is a great idea. Eight foot high sign, fire is allowed up the switchbacks when this sign is buried in snow. <laughs> and not until then. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have the sign. Yeah. There's a there's a no. No, we have a list. There's right? a well no. Right now on the trailhead <coughs> marker by Toolers, yeah. there there's a no campfire and warning avalanche danger. And no signs yeah. put on the little. It looks like a little fence. It says trailhead. Um, and it's probably. Two feet, three feet off the ground. And it's buried. You can't see either one of them. So, so we have those that so could just be moved somewhere else on a... Because we have, we thought if we took John, if he said he's mm -hmm. got those possibilities, let's, if we could send that out to everybody, of all the possibilities that, that we would want on the sign, yeah. and then we could pick from there... And make it a short make, list. Make, making a shorter list. Of the necessary ones that we think are absolutely necessary. We can all vote. And we can vote and pile that, okay. pile that all together and then decide on that. Where Now, where do you want to put those? Where you park, maybe, or, or where the trail is? Well, okay, that's a good idea. Um, do we want them in the same place? 
Is there anything specific that we want at the trailhead that should be just at the trailhead? I think the width and the hour should be at right. the trailhead. Yeah. And I think a width one also should probably be down by Tulers. By where the ball is. So dark. dark. No, dark. I'm saying right at the street. So that way they, don't they get a off. heads up before and they get to the trailhead. Yeah. Yep, and there is that one. There is the city sign that says trailhead or whatever. You could, mm -hmm. you could just. That's very too. <laughs> you, you could put them above. You could put them as a part of that, like extend that sign and put them up above or something, or attach them onto that one yeah. somehow. So it may be those that the width and the and the hours at the trailhead, and again with bottom. maybe some other rules at the bottom. Yeah. Because I think you give them a heads up before. Yes. Before they even unload their right. whatever. Well, if we come up with too many signs, you know. Yeah. People aren't going to read it. Some of them, I think, can I'll be read. put I on do. that uh, wooden sign that's up by the water tank. Yeah. You're, that, you're that awesome. Identifies all those points <laughs> you're from awesome. the Eagles Project. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah, they could go on that. That's my old. I agree. Read all the rules every time you play a game. What yeah, I would say about that? assign that to John okay. to create that because um, he's he's passionate about that. And I think Brad had some up. too. Yeah, from other trails that yeah. he's seen. So have uh, ask John Laws to do what? To Send out an email. Compile. Probably compile and, create and then that. Brad can chime in if there's something missing that he thinks needs to be on there that he's seen. I think that would be good. Happy to be here. Sounds good. That helps. And then email that out and we can all respond. Yep. But we definitely want the ones for the hours of the trail and the, the motorized width. vehicle. Well, yeah, the fire fire one and the avalanche one. I mean, well, I those ones are already there. Snowshoeing through my I think the avalanche here. one probably needs there. to be higher. But I think everything else. I wouldn't, I don't think we need to put anything else above snow line, just the avalanche one. Because if the avalanche sign's buried, they can drive right over the top of the bollards. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not going to do any good. Which is a good question. How tall is that? Uh, um, the avalanche sign? No, the bollards. Oh, oh five bollards feet. are typically like four feet, five feet. Three, yeah, three and a half, four. So they're not. Because it's just, all it is there is just to help guide behavior, yep. you know, so. Okay, so we're in favor of bollards, signs, benches. Yep. I'm not going to even think about any kind of gate now because we don't need the money. <laughs> Do, I don't do think we need, need it. Not many benches. It's just a thought. Do we what? Do we need that many benches? Do you need one? If not, we can get... I was thinking we have ten thousand dollars, so I. Oh. <laughs> well, I say we get the grant, and if we can't get all three, we'll get one or we'll get two. Yeah. But it would be nice to get all three. Like we can certainly have a wish list, can't yeah, we? Yeah, go big on the grant. Okay. Not too crazy, but but some we could probably pull a couple thousand out of somewhere to to match. You know, you got two votes right here. Yeah. <laughs> you do have two votes right here. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we've known been known to be persuasive. Yes. I think have. there's a third vote in the other room. <laughs> and that's not, majority. She's just not allowed to come in here if we get in trouble. <laughs> so does this grant have to be presented to the city council? Yes. When's your next meeting? Next Tuesday. Tuesday. You don't have to have it done. You just have to say what you're applying for. I can help you. Yeah. So I just have to put a proposal together, not the actual grant. Right. Yeah. We don't want to see the grant. We just want to say, hey, this is what we're looking for. This is potentially what the matching funds would be needed. And you can always deny the grant if we get it and we don't have the funds. What, what right. the mayor doesn't want to happen is that you go get a grant that requires a $50,000 match from yeah. the budget and no. we don't have the 50 no. and they weren't, and they, they weren't, weren't warned. Yeah. And it gives us a heads up on what's going on in the city, right? We need to make sure our right hand knows what the left is doing. 
So just a proposal. Yeah. With figures and okay. Yeah. So I can Jody. I can do that. Except she'll be she's gonna be in Hawaii unavailable. Knowing Jody, she actually won't because she's terrible at going on vacation. <laughs> so you could probably send her an email and just say, Hey, what are the, the grant the bullet points I need to cover on the grant on the grant uh, recommendation, but you'll also want to just have her add that to the agenda. For the for the what date was it again? The eighth. It's next. No, no, the twenty. Next Tuesday. Twenty first of March. Sunday. So twenty eighth. Yep. Twenty eighth is a Tuesday. <sighs> okay. Well, I won't be able to make any kind of presentation on the twenty eighth. I'm having. Oh, all of my upper teeth pulled that day. Oh, oh that's the day. That's the day. Um, yeah. I mean, I could do it for you if you want. I could. I could. Next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. I, I could. Yeah. Any. I'll be here. Perfect. I can do it for you. Or you could, right? You could, Dennis. You could do it. Okay. That'd be great. Sometimes it's better if, if one of you guys comes and then you'll get Doral's vote for sure. <laughs> I'm just going to find out what needs to go in the proposal. So basically what you need are bullet points. Yep. Yeah. So if I just had bullet points, this is... You just say, hey, PTR is applying for this grant. Here's what it is. And you need to know da -da 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 -da. what the cost... Mm -hmm. And what it's going to be for yeah. and why we need it. Okay. And Dennis is going to do the proposal. I'll, I'll present it. You can give me bullet points. Okay. All right. That'd be great. Okay. That would so be we'll good. get bullet points to Dennis. Uh, better put this on there. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Yep. I have to go back to the doctor that day. Okay. Um, next thing on the agenda is the lighting ordinance. Um, ben, do you know where we are on the IBS? If we could have something written that would uh, enforce the lighting ordinance at time of construction? Oh, IRC? Is that what it is? I thought it was International Building Standard. No? No, it's I, International Building Code. Okay. Um, that's fine. Uh, I haven't actually looked into that. I apologize. Um, Corbett led me to believe in discussions that I've had with him that the city can do whatever they want to do. So international or na international code trumps everything, right? Yeah. But it's super broad, right? House cannot collapse in earthquake, for instance, right? <laughs> National building code then is is more granulated state ordinance level city right so we can go as far down as we can or want this last well two um uh, legislative sessions ago because our current legislation or legislative body up on capitol hill is most well they're heavily in, influenced by developers or they're the developers themselves so they removed a lot of our ability to restrict certain things. So a city cannot restrict um, like color of, of dwellings, um, certain building materials, unless there's a certain specific reason. Now lighting on the other hand, right? Yeah, so we can outlaw, like we, you cannot put vinyl siding on your home in Woodland Hills, right? Because it's highly flammable, yada, yada, yada. Lighting does fall outside of those restrictions that the last le legislative session restricted on. So we still could. We can create a, a, excuse me, a tighter grouping of what is allowed and what is not at the point of um, construction. construction. Now, there are other things too, but now it comes down to enforceability, you know, oh, if it. we want, right? You could put in an ordinance something along the lines of at point of sale, there needs to be some sort of inspection around lighting. I don't know how we're going to get that enforced. I think it's a waste of time, personally. Um, 
I think it'll just be an an ordinance on the books that will be ignored. Um, but I think at per construction, I think that's your your best time. Um, the hardest part is you know like this this jelly lighting people are getting oh, man. right. The jelly lighting. There's really nothing that can be done from an enforcement standpoint because it all comes after the home's typically constructed. Now, we can get it on the books so somebody can't build their home with them. Um, Nobody builds their home with them. I mean, it's, an, it's done after. It's done after. It's, yeah. it's, it's Christmas lights for ease. every holiday and every. Exactly. So. I call them circus lights. Want at the bottom of the hill. Mm. Yeah. Going all night because it's just must be on a solar truck. Oh, really? Held the sun or something. So, another thing we can do though is we could create something in our noise ordinance or nuisance ordinances well, that require welfare that. Welfare is already in there. Got it. Well, well, we will need to define it for lighting, though, right? Dial it in a little bit tighter, because that is something that a letter can present. There already is a time there, isn't there? Isn't it ten thirty or eleven oh. p.m.? Well, hard, disturbing so. the peace is ten thirty. But but I think there's one nuisance. Lighting. If there is, then I think we need to dig that up and well, find out, because I think that makes sense in it's some regards. You know, like I though have a sweet, beautiful lady across the street from me. She's eighty eight. How old's Mary? She's something like that, right? And so she she has her porch light on all night long. For safety. For safety, because she's a widow and I get it. She she doesn't sleep if that porch light's not on. It blinds the daylights out of us and, and we don't freaking care. Out. Oh, we don't care. Right, our love for our neighbor exceeds the lighting issue, right? And so I think in that regard, that needs to have a, there needs to be a carve out for something like that. Um, also, you've got like, as, as Sherry loves to let me harass her about, you know, flag lights have to stay on all night. Um, but I think we could write something along the lines of ornamental decorative lighting needs and to be so off more, by yeah i think it's what we have now is a thousand watt per bulb if we are so many lumens to oh, forget what it i thought it was 60. it's, it's <laughs> changed well 1200 oh, lumens yeah no yeah. that's a hundred watt bulb okay. 100 watt bulb. um but i think too if we can do so many lumens per acre if people want to put their lights on a timer you know where they're all not on at once, and that's a possibility. Well, I think if I'm they all killed at the 11, start. right, or 1030 or something, then. Yeah. And like you said, well, if you, you are, read the... I mean, you know, if you're having a party, you know, oh, yeah. the maybe 11, yeah. and maybe for two weeks at Christmas, you can like I... your new chairs in the yeah, I don't know. Well, I think also with SESD jacking up their rates, I think people should be wise anyway. You know what? Why do we need to? I love baby Jesus a lot, but I don't know why he needs to be lit from the hours of midnight. So to nobody 5 hurts him. It's for safety and protection. We don't want anyone to hurt him. Hey, I am very pro nobody hurting him. <laughs> but I do yeah. think no, I, I think there's some logic here that can be a I, I know I run around the house turning all the lights off all the time I'm that person now <laughs> I have to pay the bill <laughs> well we wrote something a year and a half ago and it was way too long but that's where I'm thinking if that or something similar to that we need a construction standard. What's that? He makes them short and sweet. <laughs> no. Uh, no. We're talking about we're going we're pushing through a financial policies and procedures document oh, right now that everybody's oh. getting after because it's fifty pages long. And but it's 
It's fiscal it responsibility. Yeah. I think it needs well, to be detailed, but hey, whatever. I, I, I think you could about cover it with everything just has to go off at 11 o'clock, out, out, all outdoor lighting. And you're not trying, people aren't trying to figure out how many lumens and what portion of their but, acreage or, or whatever. You just turn it off. I think you also shouldn't shine directly into your neighbor's window. I think that needs to be so I think included. you can put time frames. So curfew is on lighting, and lighting still, per our ordinances now, lights have to be pointed down. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's just that. So. Well, it some of them can. The city, yeah. Mm -hmm. It does. Yes, but some of them can point down, and I use the house that's not demolished, abandoned mm -hmm. construction on Eagle's Nest. That's what got me thinking about this again. If they were to do lights in their eaves on the second story they're going to shine right down into Larson's house well I maybe it maybe we can put something along the lines of if it's x number of or if it's on the second story it needs to be facing the house right so if they're wanting access lights, not shiny accent lights first. you know but also well, that's like what we've got now. super also bright accent lights are hideous if you're not the house of the lord then you don't deserve to have your house lit up like that. I know. What it what it states right now, or the flag is. Yeah, I think your flag can point up. Any light source that exceeds twelve hundred lumens or one hundred watt bulb, including incandescent or equivalent, must have its light light source shielded, such that a the lighting element itself is not visible outside of the lot. And then it says B, but there's nothing there. Hey, we can put whatever we want. <laughs> we can just add a B. I can come up with B. I'll, I'll get you a B. <laughs> and C can just be the car house, right? Black lighting is exempt. Well, I think that's B. Oh, is it? I'd hope so. But federal law would trump that anyway. Have, has anything gone out? I mean, we talked a lot before, Sherry, about just educating people that, did you know this is actually part of it, you know, part of our existing covenants and the, the curfew, the light shining down, the, you know, all the things. It seems like that's a good starting point that I don't know how many people read the well, well like that would be a good idea to put it in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. also people buy it here and they're not paying any attention. They don't ever read that like that. No. You, if you they don't feel you kinda know some things, but yeah. if you just think it's just fun. Right. I think that I think we should a nice tiny reminder that not everybody likes Joe and Bob. And just, you know, yeah. three or four things, just reminding, you know, just reminding residents of Woodland Hill these are our ordinance and bonding. We can ask Carrie to do that. Ask Carrie to do what? Sorry. In the newsletter, just do a little oh, reminder. Yeah. Um, because yeah, not the ordinance be heavy to make it be three or four things that we think are the most important. Oh, yeah. I think just a little snapshot. I think I love the Facebook idea too because I don't. I've got people, all that people dark sky them. information mm -hmm. that talks about all the things pointing downward. Here's an example. Here's what you should not be doing. But it has to be in keeping with our ordinance. So the ordinance is really the first place to start as far as dark sky goes. Right. Or the IBC. Yeah. I was wondering if we just did on the Facebook page, on the city Facebook page, and then the other Facebook pages can share it to it them. But maybe just a weekly ordinance, did you know? Yeah. yeah we've you know, a little infographic. Yeah. yeah. Because I think a lot of our ordinance breaching is, you know, ignorance. ignorance. Like having your your fire hydrant, you've got to dig that out. People forget 
or, or never do that. And you can only have your cans out maybe a day or I was gonna say the cans when it's snowing, like people forget to pull them in. It's like it's a big I drive I drove up my road tonight and ours was in because I called my son and he brought one in too soon and it didn't get emptied. Oh, oh, no. To recycle one, but it's okay. But anyway, um but but our, all my neighbors were still out. I was like, Oh my gosh, you guys They'll get out tomorrow. And the when we KO them. <laughs> there was an interesting that they got with their car, but there's they're across the canyon. Um, but they had like eight dogs, and six of them were hunting dogs that would just sit over there and bay and bark, and you know, they'd go hunting in the Philippines and bring them to houses and things. But I called Jody, and there is a city ordinance, I think you can only. Whatever, whatever it was, they exceeded it. How many does Janet have? Oh, oh Janet we, need to, we need to find out what that ordinance okay, is then, and we'll change maybe it. We, maybe we make it four. But anyway, I mean, I think there's it's three. There's oh, people yep. don't know. Plenty of things you could. I yeah, looked. Yeah, that dig up on there yeah. and say, oh, am I affecting my neighbors with this? Well, I wonder if we can do it just funny. Right, yes, like yes. have a, a picture well, like no of a dog roosters. howling no. at the moon, right? And did you say, know, did you know it was have okay? A in Midland Hills. And it's probably yeah. that's probably real. It really is real. You can't have a rooster. But I think we start though with that. Did you know you can't have a male goat, right? Because that's the one that's just super random. And that's then we can true. also add there. <laughs> yeah, you can have female, but no male. No male. Right. So maybe you have a picture of a goat. Yeah, next, well, you know. something that's just odd, like an odd element yes, of like, you know, interesting. Numbers. And then interesting. a couple other. Oh, and did did did. Then actually, it, it really is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I'll make yeah. It true. Right. You know, like something like, did you know it's okay to have one dog howling at the moon, but did you know you can't have three? You know, <laughs> <laughs> something that just it takes that edge off of it. You know. So the. Yeah, well, and you can, like, and oh, like you can have yes, one cow, but you can't have two per acre or whatever. Like yeah. there's all those things you know, too. Did you know that it's not okay to to signal to aliens from your home? You know, <laughs> what you can do is, <laughs> d -d 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 -d, you know, like I think there's a way we could do this that it'd be fun instead of like we're pointing the finger. Yeah, as you know? long as as long as they know you, that it is real. Yeah, well, I think, yes. So I think it's, did you know? And then, you know, and if we do it every single week or every other week and if they're consistent formats, people will figure out, <laughs> what am I learning? You know, yeah. and we can teach it. We can train well, with patterns, right? Month, don't they? The newsletter does, but we're just saying do a post because not everyone oh. sees the newsletter. Yeah. But we have a resident that has a rooster and he, like done some kind of shock collar or something on his rooster so that a he shock collar something on rooster? yes <laughs> he's got something yes. worked out so that it doesn't i don't know what he did to it but. well and i think too if we reference the ordinance they're so easy to search oh, yeah. on the website people go in there you know go go look it up yourself or didn't you know it's easy to search the ordinances yourself? Yeah. Exactly. I think there's some fun we could have with this. Who's going to do it? Me? <laughs> you are? No, I don't know. I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Oh, you're saying I'm saying that? He's, he's I, got all the, the I, ice crafts. I, I, I know. I, I am, yes. I got issues. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, do some memes and make them. I think infographics teach better than words, right? And they need to be concise, right? So we can do four or five lighting ones over the year, right? We can, it doesn't all have to be there, you know, but make them seasonality. Right now, I think one about fire hydrant. Digging them out. Would make sense, you know, another one. For snow would be, you know, did you know a snowplow hitting a garbage can can throw it 50 feet? 
<laughs> right? Please pull them in before a snowstorm. <laughs> you know, and I can reenact that the picture for us. For rock, rock line, did you have yeah. pretty big boulders in there? Yeah. Did you know that a snowplow blade <laughs> won't win against a boulder? <laughs> <laughs> See. Okay. Then we got our the box. <laughs> yeah, no, there's that. I throw Corbin under the bus on that one. <laughs> uh, that was totally him. Um, anybody have anything else they want to bring up? No. You, you want to see what's coming our way? This is from my cabin today. Let's see. Total whiteout. Hold where, on. Where is it? Yellowstone. Oh. Well, they've shut Beautiful. down Tree Mountain. Oh, Sardine okay. Canyon's yeah. shut down. That comes our way from the north. Mm -hmm. Is that so it's, oh, it's coming. coming from the north? I think so. It's just we're a, massive, a big it, blizzard. My camera went out because it's solar and there's too much snow. I found if you go to weather.gov backslash Utah, you can type in your zip code. It's better. And, oh, it's way better. I never saw this. KSL is terrible. Any other business? I just want to add one comment for you guys. When it comes to a, the trail and all the things that we're working on, from the ball, the bullards, the signs, the benches, uh, cameras, whether we do real or dummy. I have never been on a 1.5 mile trail in this entire state that's had that much. So I'm just encouraging you guys that this should be very helpful to show people that we care about our trail. I think it's more than enough to kind of state what we're looking for in terms of trail usage. Um, and I think we need to establish that date for maintenance on the trail. There are trees down that are blocking the way right now. Um, not that many. Uh, Natalie, what do you think? Maybe four that are across the trail, tree-wise? Yeah, and I mean, you can be left around. Yeah. So, but for a while, I'm pretty sure Some of the snow shield there or something? Or? Be yeah, careful. Really? Today, I just, with my micro spikes. Yeah, that's all you need right now. Just, Wow. I mean, I went up last winter. It was fun. A couple of girlfriends. Well, maybe what we need to do is just give it another month or so, and then oh, we yeah, can see if it's going to. We can gonna... establish some kind of date. For we water don't know. I'm just wondering if when, when the snows, because if we, if we have, the second half of the snow season, which is typically larger than the first, right. equivalency. You know, it we is. might be, yeah. Well, yeah, we still have it. Fall. If we did it Most of the snow is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm working out. The water corridors a chance to set up because nobody wanted any snow. Yeah. The biggest part of the water year is coming. Yeah. Spring. March is the biggest, March and April. So with it's. So we're it just melts. Getting started. It melts in between. But I would, yeah, I would say October. probably in October. For October regular, is a maintenance. Good regular maintenance. And then we'll figure out when we need probably to Probably the beginning of trees. October, I would say. Yeah. Right. Because I'd love to go up and clear all the trees out of the. In the fall, it'd be pretty. Well, or in the spring here. Okay. If nobody has anything else, the next meeting is the 21st of March at 7 here. 21st? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I won't be here. No. Thanks. Yeah. I'll be here. I'll be here. Sorry. Sorry, it's being Yeah, did you want to take notes? 21st? Sure. 7 p.m. <sighs> Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to, that we adjourn this meeting. And I will second it. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, Brad. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Bye. He's been jet